The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 10th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure you have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question, but you can't call in, Stevie's got your back. Send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Hard to believe we've got a sea of green still out here when it comes to the U.S. indices. All trading the upside. Dow's up 54 points, so a little over one-tenth of a percent, a quarter percent for the S&P or 14 points, quarter percent for the Nasdaq 100, 50 points, three-tenths for the Russell. That's about six points. One and a quarter percent, one and a quarter percent for the semis. That's a 71-point move. Trendies are up 24. New York Stock Exchange up 57. Gold's up 14. Silver's flat. Like to recruit up 76 pennies. Natural gas back about three and a half cents. And the 30-year Treasury put out 118.18. That's a move of four ticks to the upside. Our leader in the clubhouse, dollar-wise, the upside is Lanthesis, Lanthesis Holdings, up 25 bucks, 33%. As in the holdings, Stevie got that one, 19 bucks, 1.8%. Synopsis Inc., seven bucks, one and a quarter percent. Eli Lilly up seven tenths percent. Uh, At Core is up uh, $6. That's nearly a 5% move. And our leader to the downside is Decker Outdoor, down 60 bucks, six and four tenths percent. You got HubSpot down 28, Intuit down 25, CrowdStrike off 17, MasterCard down 12. We got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin our day actually. Let's begin our day and flip off of these charts here and move over to the white background charts. We're going to go ahead and um, dissect and bisect uh, the uh, charts here for the uh, for some of the main indices out here. So let's begin by taking a look at the semiconductors. you got the semis up, 72 points, straight out of 58.37. What does that mean? Is that time to celebrate? Well, if we take a look at the daily time frame, you're looking at the upper left-hand chart. Today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. What would you know about the TD9 count? If there's going to be a top, it's going to form on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So the semiconductor index is suggesting that we get a daily top anywhere between today and Friday. Now, there's a Rhodesman Dominicator signal that is present. If we were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodesman Dominicator top. If you go down to the bottom, lower left-hand side, you got the semiconductor index. Well, that move today has triggered bar the bar a TD9 count top. So there's going to be a TD9 count top that is going to complete on the weekly time frame uh, on Friday, no matter what. Now, the cool thing about that, bullish or bearish, is that if we start seeing price trade above and close above the weekly TD9 count top, that tells us that we are headed much higher. But we have to respect those TD9s. You don't have to. But Stevie will respect the TD9 counts out there. And that would at least suggest a retracement back to its oscillator and change line. On the weekly time frame, that's 55.62. It's 50.70. 5742 on the daily. The the SMHs, they got a totally different, they're totally different holdings, not com completely different, but different holdings, different weightings out there. 
And so whereas we have a TD9 count patterned inside the semiconductor index, we do not have that for the daily time frame for the SMHs. Now, you've got a sell the D point top and a TD9 count top, a close above the high, which would be 279.57, would negate those prior signals out there. So those are still in place as we speak. We can see here, even on the weekly chart, we do not have a TD9. We got a TD9 count. We just don't have a TD9 count top. Not unless price is able to spike above uh, 279.57 and do that by Friday with the weekly time frame chart fall into place with the semiconductor index. So that's chart number one that we wanted to look at. Chart number two, I'm going to close this down uh, just simply to uh, free up some space. I have a number of things that are open. Figured there was a number of things that you and I wanted to chat about. This isn't one of them. Not that we don't want to chat about this, but that was not where I was going. I was going to try to stay with the indices. Let's take a look at the Dow. What do we know about the Dow? When we take a look at the equity future contract, we pull this back. It's got a TD9 count top. We've seen here a, uh, a Gartley sell pattern that formed. That Gartley sell pattern has resistance at the high of June 24th. In order to negate that signal, a price would have to close above 39999 So if we are in a bear market, I'm not saying that we are. What did H.M. Gartley say? Sell that first, uh, uh, sell the D-point pattern in a bear market. Well, that is in place for the Dow equity future contract. If we take a look at the Dow cash indice, we've got the same signal. Now, in order to negate that signal, you would need to see a close above its June 24th high. And inside the Dow, that's 39571 23. 23 being one of the numbers that I used when I was playing sports. That was a my home jersey for basketball was 34 for the away jersey. Ah, that's a long time ago. In any event out here, if we take a look at the Dow Diamonds, the Dow Diamonds also has a sell the D point top in order to negate that signal. And that's a Gartley sell pattern. Price would have to close above 395.59. At 395.22 is profile resistance out there. And the EDOW, guess what? It also has a sell the D point top. It's at June 24th high there. 3428. So the Dow has already given us a sell signal out there. It may just be waiting for the other indices to complete their patterns as well. Let's go take a look at those. Gold is going to show up first. I'm just closing these things out one at a time. That chart happens to be uh, the way that uh, Ninja Trader works is defaulting back to kind of the first chart that I have open. If we take a look at the NQs out here, today is bar number nine of a TD9 count. That means we're going to go to confirm TD9 count today, a pattern that will complete tomorrow. Of course, a bear reversal candle would confirm a Rogeman indicator top. Downside target would be the Osseter and Chain sign, 2592. We get a close below that. We're looking at 2371. And the X100, the same signal. We've got bar number nine today. That pattern completes tomorrow. Its downside target remains at 2368. If we take a look at the Qs, same pattern there. Price should target its re, uh, OUL on the way to the downside, on its way down, should it move that way, 495 and change. And finally, we take a look at the QQEW. That's the little bugger here. That's the one that is saying, you know what? I'm not so sure that we have a top out there. It did have a TD9 count top. It got negated about uh, four or five, about four days ago out there. So I'm going to take my P's and Q's at this stage here from the uh, NQ, the NDX100, and the QQQ out there. So that's what's going on there. Let's close this out, see if we get to the S&P 500. We're about to go to a hard break here, but I still have a few seconds. Let's see if these charts populate. It's going to be the wrong charts. I'll tell you what. We come back from this break. We're going to take, we'll finish this out by looking at the S&P 500. That's what we have on our screen. And today is the completion of a TD9 count top for its daily time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's move on to the, um, to the uh, S&P 500. Today is going to complete a TD9 count top. Now, the cool thing about that, is we whatever today's high is if price closes above that tomorrow it negates that signal tells us about a strong upward momentum move and we'd identify the next area of resistance should we be able to find that in the case of the es mini the es mini is only in bar number six it's got a roads momentum indicator signal it needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a uh, top out there Short of that, it's suggesting it wants to move higher. So we got a divergence there. The S the SPY out there has a, a TD9 count top. It's in bar number nine today. That says its pattern completes tomorrow. Well, it confirms today and completes tomorrow. In the case of the equal weighted ETF, it's nowhere near its highs out there. In fact, it's just consolidating with inside its uh, profile with support at 163 and resists up at the 164 level. So that's on the S&P 500. Uh, let's take a look and finish this off by taking a look at the uh, – save this yeah uh, by taking a look at the uh, russell 2000 we'll get that screen populated what the heck happened there ah that's what happened again going back reverting back to that first chart here we got the uh, russell 2000 so we take a look at the russell 2000 what do we know well we take a look at the cash indice not really a whole lot it does have a buy the d point uh, pattern out there prices above its oscillator and change line um, you know, maybe it wants to rally further, but uh, I really see a descending trend line that's in place out there. On a, the equity future contract, it's also got to buy the deep point pattern. It prices traded with inside its new profile. The support level here is at 20.3590. A close below that would suggest lower price out there, resists up at 2074. And we take a look at the IWM. It also has a buy the deep point pattern where price consolidating with inside its daily profile. I would suggest the Russell might be taking its P's and Q's from the semi the NQ, and the S&P 500. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the core indices out there. Let's get this chart out of the way. Every time I close one out, it pops back to this, this being gold, silver, and the GDX. So we take a look at gold out here. Let's just expand out the daily time frame chart. 
And on a daily basis, what gold is doing is testing profile resistance. That profile resistance is at 20, basically where we're trading right now. The actual number is 2382.60. If price closes above that, you've got resistance up at this uh, junior consolidation with inside the larger consolidation. So you've got resistance, let's call that, at about the uh, 2406 level, 2407. And if price can clear that, then we're looking at moving up towards the top of the consolidation. The top of that consolidation, really about the high from April 12th. And that's at the 2471 area. So gold right now is a nice rally over the last couple of days, but nothing more than really just a move into uh, resistance out there. Let's see if that fails on a weekly basis. Price is also testing resistance. That happens to be that oscillator and change line. The case of silver just trading between a falling and rising descending trend line. Uh, they can't both be descending. A falling and rising trend line out there. It also has resists up at 3167. That's the center of its bearish structured, uh, our bullish structured daily profile. Price nearly, really needs to close above on a daily basis. 3167 to tell us that the rally inside of silver is more than a counter trend move. In the case of the GDX, the GDX yeah, it looks like it wants, well, it's targeting its recent swing point. That recent swing point was May 20th. The low on that swing point is at 3652. The volume is about 25 million shares so far today we are at 7 million shares and a little less than two hours of trading let's just call that about 21 22 million or so uh, with regard to volume a little bit light perhaps but watch for a close if price closes above 36.52 then we should go target the high at 37.47 what happens stevie if we close below 36.52 if you do that on lighter volume you'll have tested and rejected a swing point on light volume out there on a weekly time frame chart Price is trading in resistance. It's that dark cloud cover candle. That says price needs to close above 37.47 to be on its merry way to the upside. So that takes care of gold, silver, and the GDX out there. We're going to close out that chart as well. I tell you what we should do, and we will do. Let's go start taking a look at some of the requests that have come in. The first request that came in is from uh, John C. He wants to take a look at the financial sector via the XLF. As we take a look at this, what do we know? What we do know here is that uh, price is traded above both its green oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. So it, it's, in a, uh, it's in a bullish mode for sure. It should continue to move higher out there. Um, do I see any kind of a top? I don't see anything right now. I do see an A to B equals CD pattern that has formed. Let's draw in the A to B line. And then let's move that A to B line to that C point out there. And so the initial price projection area, 42 and change out there with regard to the XLF. I don't see anything at this moment in time to suggest that it won't do that. If we look at the weekly time frame chart here, John, you'll see prices trade above. It's uh, the bottom of its bullish structured profile. Uh, we see a series of higher lows over the last four weeks out there. That would suggest a run up to 42.19. That's the top of its profile. So you got around the 42.19 level on an A to B equals CD, the top of the weekly profile out there. And then when we take a look at the monthly profile, which does have a nothing a burger, it has a roads map, sorry, it has a roads map indicator um, uh, top that is out there. Uh, but with price and price, price is trading into the sell zone. But I think the monthly chart here is really going to take its cues from the daily and the weekly chart, which suggests higher price out there. Resistance on the monthly is at 42.49. Um, so you should at least get a two to three day rally out there. It's normal dance steps as we take a look at it. If the Texas two step is usually a two to four bar rally or two to four bar moves either to the upside or to the downside out there. Uh, so the last two moves to the upside have been three consecutive days. Maybe it's going to try for three consecutive days this time too. So John C. Hope that helps you out with regard to the review of the financial sector inside of the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at Zoom. ZM is the ticker symbol there. And that is for Alton. And his question is buy, sell, or hold. How about you? You look at the charts and you tell me, what do you think? What is Zoom telling you and I and Alton out there? Is this a buy, sell, or hold? Well, I tell you what, the daily time frame out here has an A to B equals CD, a buy the D point pattern. Nice big old bullish engulfing candle that formed on June 20th out there. That candle is likely going to be tested low of that candle. That had volume out here of 4.3 million shares. Right now we are trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile and a close today, Alton, below 56.42 is going to suggest a run for that swing low. Volume today so far is about 921. Let's call it about a 3 million share a day or something less than that going into 4.3. 
So the daily says, I want to head lower. Does that mean it's a sell? No, it just means it's likely to go target that uh, buy the uh, D-point pattern that formed on June 20th. Let's look at the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame is screaming sell, baby, sell. Now, I'm not saying short a $56 stock that at one time was up at the couple hundred dollar level or so, right? Was this at $600? And now we're trading down at uh, 56 Looks like toast, French toast to be exact. Now, there is no bottom pattern here, Alton, on the weekly time frame. We're trading below profile. We're trading below red oscillator and change line. Price is moving into that swing point from June 21st. That had volume of 21 million shares. So far, not halfway through the week. We are at about 8 million shares or so. So, you know, it's it may be pulling back with similar or just slightly less volume. And on a monthly basis, we're trading below profile support out there this is just that price can get down to the 4601 so you're asking buy sell or hold on a daily time frame you know it's it's a it's a somewhat of a buy although i wouldn't buy it right now i'd see how that test of that swing point holds out the weekly and the monthly they're saying not hold they're not saying buy i guess that means they're saying sell steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Try one of our products from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars. Now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at direction.com. Read carefully. 
Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a Decker's Outdoor. This thing uh, creaming to the downside out here. Volume so far, about 340,000 shares out there. This is for ELO inside our Tiger's Den. Now, ELO, what you want to watch both today and tomorrow, you can see on the daily time frame that TD9 count top. We can see that this formed a TD9 count bottom back here in the trading day of June 20th. Price never got above that oscillator and change line. And then when it closed below that low out here, it closed below that low. It looks like on July the 1st out there. That was telling you and I that price wanted to go target the next level of support, which at that time was its breakout level at 889.35. Now, you may get a close below 889.35 today. The question is, do you get a close above it to, or below it tomorrow? If you do, that's telling us more likely than not that this wants to move lower. But when we look at the weekly time frame chart, which does not have a topping pattern that has been, I take that back. It's got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. That was a key reversal bar on the weekly time frame. But price is pulled back to the buy zone. Buy zone was established by that bullish structured weekly profile. And that tells you that the buy zone was between 820.22 and 852.07. Well, you hit that this morning out there. Doesn't mean you can't move lower. And that's why you want to kind of watch, not kind of, that's why you do want to watch the daily time frame and see how price deals with that 889.35. Now, the daily time frame would not form a bottom pattern. However, pulling back to a breakout level can be a bottom. I hope that made sense to you. It didn't confuse you. It confused me. And if it didn't confuse you, then that's a beautiful thing. So this could be, could be, I'm not saying buy it. It's closing that gap, but it could be a buy. Now, when this thing had gapped up, this was on the trading day of May 24th. The volume behind that was 949,000 shares again today. So far, we're at 340. So that could be matching that type of volume on a watch at a day's end. If you look at the monthly time frame chart, the monthly time frame chart does not have a top. And its pullback has found support at its oscillator and change line. So 868.40. Now, if this were to be a bottom, we would see some type of bottoming signals on its shorter term time frame charts, such as a 30 minute chart. Do we see a bottom? No, we do not. How about if we put on a 65 minute chart out there? Let's put that on. Do we see a bottom pattern there? The answer is no, we do not. So I don't see any, I don't see it as actually bottoming necessarily today. It may take a little while for that to happen. But right now, what you want to do is you want to watch this 889.35 both today and tomorrow. If that holds, well then, even though the intraday charts are saying not just yet from a bottom standpoint, Deckers may have in fact indeed bottom. So ELO, don't mean to be ambivalent. What we need to do is get some further information on that, and that's going to come on the uh, close today and the close tomorrow. So maybe we should look at this on uh, Monday, if you don't mind. But you'll have to remind me because Stevie's memory is not that good. It's good. It's just not that good. Let's take a look at uh, Slumberjay out there. This is for Dano inside the Tiger's Den. And Dano would like to see 43 buckaroonies on this. Well, Dan, if that's going to happen, you need to see price close below this bullish structured profile. You can see how that held the support yesterday. That being the bottom of that profile, 45.14. We're at 45.20 right now. Um, so that's the first level to watch. If it closes below that, you want to see two consecutive closes below that level. Again, that level being the bottom of its profile, and that's at 45.14. If you get that, then the weekly time frame chart, which is trading inside a bearish structured weekly profile and now below its red oscillator and change line, that would sig signal 4329. So you're looking at 43. I don't know if that was even Steven, but I'd go with 43.29 as a potential. Now, the swing point on a weekly basis is June 14th, and volume there is 54 million shares. We're almost, but not quite, halfway through the trading week out here. So where are we at in volume on a weekly basis? We are at 15 million shares. So price is moving into that swing point with lighter volume. Just caution, but it's moving to that swing point with lighter volume. Watch the bottom of that daily profile. Again, a bullish structured profile, a Rhodesman to indicator bottom, no top. Just price trading with inside and consolidating with inside that profile level out there. And if you take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it has a bullish structured profile. And last month, price found support at it, it being 44.67. Last month was a, a test of a swing point that had volume of 226 million shares. It was tested with 257 million shares, so a little bit lighter volume. Nonetheless, the profile is held. So you're looking for that to move to 43? Not so sure that, uh, in fact, you're going to get that. What about on a 30-minute time frame chart as prices is pulled back to support on that daily time frame? I, 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 I,
probably pull this back further. So we can find a uh, A to B equals CD pattern out there. I see a wave number seven pattern. Let's move from 30 to 65 and see what we have out here. 65 minute, you're forming a TD nine count bottom. You are in bar number eight right now. This closes at 1140. Bar number nine just is simply going to be a uh, need a close below 4549. So you do have a bottom signal there. Let's check out the 130 out here, 130 minute chart, 330 minute bars in one day. I see a wave number seven bottom signal out there, a potential. Um, I have to really go back and say, is that truly the one that's in play out here? I can't, I can't really get, I don't have enough data out there. Uh, so look, uh, Schlumberger, you know, may in fact be bottoming. Uh, because it's holding a uh, support. The one that uh, is not at support is the weekly time frame. So you got to keep your eye on that daily chart, which I'm sure you will. But if it continues to hold that support level, bottom of its profile, you might want to tighten up your stop on that uh, trade. Let's go on to our next request. This is coming in from Dan in New York City. And Dan would like to take a look at ticker symbol GPC out there. A GPC, what is GPC? Well, it's a symbol for the uh, company called Genuine Parts Company out there. I bet I probably bought a few Genuine Parts. Let's take a look at Genuine Parts. What's it doing? It's got a TD9 count bottom. Uh, that swing point is being tested today. The swing point I'm referring to on bar number eight was on July 5th. Now the volume on July 5th, obviously a holiday trading day out there. That was at 1.4 million shares. So far today, you're down with what? Wow, you're really trading into light volume here. So you're getting a bottom signal inside of GPC out here on the daily time frame. If I look at the weekly time frame, looks like you're going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count pattern on Friday. Now that pattern could complete next Friday as well because it's going to be bar number eight. We're trading into a swing point that has volume. This is a swing point from November 3rd of 6.2 million shares. Last week, we were into it with 4 million shares. So far this week, 2 million shares. So another about a 4 million a share week out there. And on a monthly time frame, you're back at support. And that's at profile support. The exact number of the profile support level is 131.21. So what do you have out here? You've got a TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame. The question for you, Dan, is can price take out that oscillator and change line? That's, what need, that's what's needed. You've got some major battles upside. The first one at about 132.67. Price is also trading below its daily profiles. Now those profiles form above price. That's a bearish signal out there but we've got a bottom so we've got to go at the bottom what does it have to do first it's got to close above 132 and change 132.67 then it will go take on 135.52 that would be the next battleground the next one after that 137.12 followed by 138.73 followed by 141.59 so what gpc genuine parts needs to do it's got to put on its own genuine parts of those nice boxing gloves because it's got some boxing matches ahead on any rally Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, You've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at NXE. That is Next Gen Energy out here. Uh, CMG, let me, uh, sorry, multitasking and doing a very poor job of it. So next gen energy. So I don't have a daily bottom pattern. That doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. In fact, right now you are getting a profile change in trend signal for its daily time frame. Two consecutive close above 716 and the move today is pretty wide ranging bar. It looks like that is a likely outcome. Should suggest a further move higher. Now, your question out here uh, should be, LB, is where's that further move higher? Turns out that price right now is dealing with the weekly profile resistance level at 738. So if on Friday price is trading above 738, its next upside target is that green oscillator and change line. That's at 768. If price can close above 768 on a weekly time frame, then you're all clear. You're all clear to run up to the recent highs towards that 880, 890-ish area out there. I'm not measuring it, but you know where those highs are at. The monthly time frame has a TD9 account, Roads Mintum, wave number seven top. Boy, it's got a lot of tops out there. Does that make it a serious top? No, it just makes it a top. What's price doing? It's trading with inside its profile. It's above its green oscillator and change line. So that would add to the idea that you could rally up to the next level of resistance. Again, that level being around 768 to uh, 768. If you, and that number is going to change, so I don't know if it's 768 or 778, but use that as your guideline. But right now, uh, things are looking like you have a profile change in trend. Now, what you'd really like to see is more than two bars to the upside. So today is going to become bar number one. If we take a look at its most recent rallies out there, they haven't lasted more than two bars out here. So you'd sure like to see that. Uh, not a guarantee that it's going to happen. I'm just suggesting that's what you would love to see out there. Of course, if you get more than four bars consecutive to the upside, that's a, a signal of a uh, of a change in trend, and that this should further this should move uh, even higher out there. So, LB, thanks so much for writing in. You're holding long. I would stay long. Next gen energy out there. Let's go take a look at EWH. Just for GTE. Uh, GTE, you, put, you sent in about uh, six, seven, eight requests out there. I won't have time to get to each of those today. I just selected the first one that you had, and that was for EWH out here. So we take a look at EWH. What do we see? We see that this has a road momentum indicator bottom pattern, a wave seven bottom, with price targeting its first level of resistance. That first level of resistance is the oscillator and change line. Not too many pennies higher than where it's trading. Where is that oscillator and change line? It's exactly at 1518. We're at 1516. We close about 1518 out there, and it hasn't been above its oscillator and change line for weeks out here. Uh, that should that suggests a move higher. That move higher 
would likely be between about 1553 to 1564. On a daily time frame, the actual counter trend resistance level would be 1564. That means on a further rally, you need to see the daily close above that area to tell you that this rally is more than just a counter trend move. That 1553 number came from price uh, that came from the weekly oscillator and change line. Price got down and so far has tested and rejected the uh, support level, which is at 1499 out there. On a monthly basis, it's a little bit concerning because it's still trading below profile, which is at 1533. But right now, it's the daily and the weekly that are in control of price movement. Watch that oscillator and change line. I believe that was 1518. You close above that, you should get a further rally. So I hope that helps you out, GT, and thank you for all those requests. If I don't have anything as the show ends, I can go back to those uh, uh, requests of yours, those emails of yours. G-Man, inside the tiger's den, wants to take a look at artificial intelligence. I would prefer to look at real intelligence out there. I spent a little time, and when I say a little time, I mean very little time, on Sunday playing with that chat GBT thing out there. And then I tried to understand you know, the difference between, between the uh, different versions of AR out there. And, and when, I, when I understood that chat GPT was giving me all the answers by just simply scraping the web, the web that has a lot of bad information out there, I kind of got confused. That's artificial intelligence? In any event out here, with regard to AI, right now you've just got a TD9 count top that went ahead and confirmed yesterday, completing today, and you've got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside that profile. That ranges from about 2715 up to 3010. Now what you're watching out here, G-Man, is you're watching that oscillator and change line. If price closes below it, it's, uh, it's held uh, the last couple of days out there, it being... Uh, 29.56, then odds would favor at least another move back to 28.63 or to 27.15 out there. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, price is also dealing with resistance. That is its oscillator. And, uh, that is the profile area. Profile resistance out there at 29.80. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, you have a consolidation with inside its monthly profile. So AI right now is in a good old fashioned consolidation. Will this continue to move higher? It's got a first takeout profile resistance at 3010, and then it needs to close above the high from July 8th, and that high is at 3103. So the daily top is sort of neutral because that oscillator and change line is holding the support. But if you close below that, we should see some lower price out there. Uh, if I look at a um, an intraday chart out here, let's start with the uh, 65. You're looking for higher levels, so you really need price to close above that TD9 count top and certainly above those profile areas. On a 65-minute uh, time frame chart, I don't see uh, any problems out here suggesting a further rally would be likely. If we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, and that's because on the 65-minute price was above all resistance levels. That is the same thing with regard to the 30-minute time frame chart. Price is above all resistance levels. So uh, that's suggesting that price should rally further. If it doesn't rally further out there, somebody's got to say, hmm, something to think about. So, G-Man, I hope that helped you out with regard to AI scraping the Internet that is full of a lot of garbage out there. Wow. Who are the truth tellers out there? So let's go take a look at our next request. This is from, uh, didn't write it down, but I saw it. It's from ELO. Would like to take a look at Chipotle. CMG is the ticker symbol out there. I don't know if that was for me or not, ELO, but I'm going to assume that it was at this point in time. So with regard to Chipotle, what do we know about it? Well, we don't know anything yet because it hasn't populated. But I can look at my other screen to tell us on a daily basis and a weekly basis we are below profile levels. Now you see that on the daily time frame as well. Is there an A to B equals CD pattern the downside there most certainly is but we're beyond the one-to-one -one area so if this were to generate a bullish reversal candle uh, then what we would have is a buy the D point pattern. Short of that, price is suggesting it wants to head lower. Head lower to where? Well, the next breakout level on a daily time frame is down at 53.40. Let's try to figure out, could price get down to 53.40? Of course, price can do whatever it wants to do. It's not really paying attention to what Stevie thinks, but let's take a look at the technical indicators. 53.40 is the breakout level on a daily time frame. On a weekly basis, Chipotle has a rose momentum indicator top. With price trading below its bullish structured weekly profile, 61.8. Of course, this needs a second close below that next week, but this is suggesting moving back to 4408. That's its next level of support. In both the daily and the weekly time frame, even in the monthly time frame, that's all in lieu of new profiles that could form out there. I have no idea whether a new profile will form. So we've got to go with the data that we've got right now. The monthly time frame chart would be the savior on a downside move. Why would it be the savior? Well, actually, 
It depends where it closes. If, in fact, at the end of the month, price is able to close below 58.14 and the TD9 count pattern that's in place right now goes away. What we can also see out here is price could be targeting 56.47. Don't hold me to the 47, um, but if that's the oscillator and change on it. If price were to close below that, then that's going to tell us 53.40 is absolutely in play and maybe 44.08. So as we take a look at it here, ELO, uh, Chipotle, uh, not looking that good. Um, I do see the bottom of a new profile. It's not showing up on the white background chart. And that support, another level to also watch would be 54.10 on a further move lower. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back to close out the show. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're going to go take a look at IONQ. Uh, this is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, Dan, I know you want me to focus on the weekly, and I will, but I can't ignore the TD9 count top that's forming today on the daily time frame. That is likely going to affect the weekly outlook here. Now, that pattern is going to go ahead and confirm today, complete tomorrow. It's confirming that pattern before it gets out up to the breakdown support level at 813. Odds favor that this is going to pull back. Now, that pullback may just be to test the uh, first level of support which is the top of its profile, which price closed above yesterday, is trading above today, and that's at 776. So that's the shorter term outlook. On the weekly time frame chart, not that I have a bottom pattern out here, but I do have price trading above its oscillator and change line. We have not seen that, and you're going to look for a weekly close above that. We have not seen that inside of IONQ since December 
of last year out there. So close above that would be a positive thing, and price could target or should target the top of its new profile, and that's at 924 out there. So what's the move to 924? The daily is the one that's going to get in the wake of, in the way of that move out there. Dano, I hope that's what you were looking for on uh, that. Lastly, we don't have a ton of time for it, but we'll go ahead and put up the top eight charts inside the S&P 500. That's what you're going to see. These top eight charts, I was actually surprised to see that inside the S&P 500, these top eight, they represent 45%, um, no, 32%. 32% of the weighting is in these eight stocks. Microsoft, which has a sell the D point pattern yesterday. You've got a wave number seven inside of NVIDIA with price testing profile resistance. You're going to complete a TD9 count top today inside of Apple. Amazon has a roads momentum indicator top. Meta is in a world of its own. Google needs a bearish reversal candidate to confirm a roads momentum indicator top. Berkshire Hathaway is just consolidating sideways. And Eli Lilly. Well, that looks bullish as can be out here. It needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. So several of these instruments here are confirming what we're taking a look at inside the S&P 500, the SPY, not so much the ES Mini out there, that we could be or should be seeing a, at least a short-term top, could be more than that, by week's end. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me today. Please stay tuned for all the great programming. And uh, please join me again tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. And ask everybody this question, where are the peacemakers? What I saw last night on TV was a group of countries that wants to go to war. Where are the peacemakers? Take care, folks. See you later.